Well, I guess it's that time. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say welcome everybody to my first live event doing winemaking on the DIY fermentation channel. I uh, appreciate you all for stopping by, and if you all don't mind, we're just going to go ahead. However, before we go ahead, a couple of things. One, I hope the audio and video quality on your side is okay. If not, just uh, give me a little shout out to let me know that uh, there's some issues. Uh, I've been fighting with the software all day, but it uh, looks like it might, uh, it might be okay by now. In any event, all right, what we're going to make today is pink grapefruit wine. We're going to be using bottled juice because it's a whole lot simpler than actually using fresh grapefruit. Actually, it's a lot cheaper too. Uh, so we're going to start with this. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos, you may have noticed that uh, with substitution of this between uh, grape juice or apple juice or, or really almost any other kind of juice, everything else is pretty much the same. You might substitute the tea bag for a lemon, but basically that is pretty much it. Now to make this wine, uh, we're going to have, again, approximately one gallon of pink grapefruit juice. I'm going to say approximately because whereas these used to be 64 ounces, these days these are only 60 ounces. So there we go. I'll make up the difference if, ne if necessary. We're going to be using about two cups of sugar to start. Uh, make little variations because you never really know just how much sugar is actually in the uh, juice that you're using. I'm trying to shoot for a uh, gravity rating of about uh, 1.080 uh, to give me a fairly decent strength wine. We're going to be using a packet of wine yeast. I'm using Premier Blanc uh, uh, Red Star. If you don't have this, uh, use whatever you've got. If all you've got is Fleischmann's bread yeast, go for it won't be as good, but then again, you use what you got. Uh, for our tannin, which is going to provide some astringency to the wine, uh, we're going to be using tea bag. Freshly brewed tea. Everything has been sanitized using star sands. Keep that in mind. If you don't have star sands, I mean, you can use a weak bleach solution or however you could possibly use to... to, to uh, um, sanitize your equipment, uh, whether it's your your, your spoons or or, or your, your 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 jugs, uh, everything that you're going to be using that's going to come in contact with the wine, you want that as clean as possibly can because you don't want germs to getting in and ruining your batch. Oh, one minute. Video is a little choppy, but the audio is great. I concur. Can't be helped this time. All right. Uh, got the software day before yesterday, been using it for two days, trying to get the ins and outs of it. Uh, my laptop is not the latest and greatest on the market. It was fine for today, but it's getting a little old. And the video quality, well, it can't be helped this time. Uh, if it's really bad, just let me know that the uh, uh, video is choppy. And uh, it might be a little while before we do the next live video, but it will be an improvement. Uh, let's see. We need something to ferment our wine in. You know, all of my videos, or most of my videos, you've heard me refer to this as a jug, <laughs> carboy, demijohn, or whatever. It's got multiple names for the same for the same use. We're going to need an airlock with stopper, and to determine the alcoholic content, we'll be using a hy um, hydrometer. And to get this process started, let's get it going by opening up our first bottle of pink grapefruit juice. Now, it doesn't have to be a brand name, okay? They're not compensating me for using their brand. It's just that I grew up drinking this and it was the first one that I, I was able to grab. And we're gonna go ahead and put at least one into our carboy. Alright. The next thing I want to do is we're going to put in our two cups of sugar.
Now, if anybody might be sitting back there wondering, well, why didn't he just put the sugar in first using the big funnel? I'm wondering the same thing myself because that's what I had planned to do. But once I got started, well, you know, this was plan B. All right, plan B. The next thing we want to do is that we want to dissolve that sugar as best we can. Now, again, there are a couple of ways I could have done this initially. I could have just heated up some of the juice and put the sugar in, and once it got warmed up, stirred everything up together, and then put it back into the uh, carboy. Or I could have just put everything in a blender and let the blender do the work for me. But I still have some weight that I'm trying to get rid of, so I have no problems whatsoever with shaking this up. This might take a moment. But before I do that, let's see. Uh, no complaint like that. Are you a teacher? If not, you should be. No, I'm not a teacher. I'm retired. Okay. Most of my career was spent in IT. So once, uh, once I got out of my field and decided that I couldn't do anything else that I really wanted to do, I decided to retire early. Uh, let's see. Uh, da -da -da -da. Thanks for the inspiration. You're welcome. Uh, remember to avoid drinking grapefruit juice when using <laughs> simvastations. I'm not quite sure what that is, but I'll, t I'll take you up on that. Uh, da -da -da -da. He is my kind of... <laughs> okay. <laughs> there was a product on the market. In fact, it's probably still out there. I think it was called a Flowbee, where it was kind of like a rod that had two weights on the end of it. And they originally had uh, uh, some woman who was shaking it up in a manner that was suggestive of something other than <laughs> trying to lose weight. Well, I don't mind shaking this up. It also does another thing. It also aerates the wine so that the yeast will have a little bit of something to give them a kickstart when they get going. All right. Good enough. We can go ahead and add the rest of our grapefruit juice. Okay, not bad, almost to just where I wanted it to, to be. I still feel short chains because I didn't get a full 64 ounces, but still, not bad. At least I don't have to use water to bring the level up to the top. But before I do that, I've got some comments here I want to read right quick. I hear that blending can be excessive and harmful to the fermentation. Uh, well, that depends. Uh, I mean, if you're just using bottled juice, then it's okay. But there are some fruits that have uh, seeds that, uh, when they're blended up, they'll, they'll, they, they can impart some bitterness into the wine. So normally, in, in a case like that, then, uh, uh, yeah, I, I would normally not blend. There are also some skins that will do that as well. Let's see. Uh, innovative Music, I've started my own winemaking project from watching you. Well, if we're, while we're on that subject, uh, I'm still a novice. Okay, I've been doing this for really less than a year. Uh, I decided when I started this channel that uh, if I'm going to start my wine making journey uh, from scratch, I'm going to as well create a channel and, and, and video everything that I've been doing uh, from almost day one. In fact, uh, I think my second batch is when I, when I first started making wine. Uh, I almost forgot. I'm going to add a tannin mixture. Okay, now I'm happy. That's where I want it to be. <laughs> okay, perfect. Let's see. Um, da -da -da -da. Uh, innovative music again. How do you determine the amount of sugar to use? Is it based on the type of fruit and the sugar the fruit has? Well, technically, yes. Uh, for the most part, the, making the determination is if you don't have a hydrometer, 
then you pretty much have to uh, rely on the recipe uh, to give you an idea of how much sugar that they used and uh, hopefully you'll come up with the same results. Uh, there is one problem with that and I ran into that when I was making my blackberry wine. Uh, the recipe said four pounds of sugar uh, instead of four cups of sugar. And because I was lazy then that particular day, I didn't take a hydro meter. I just relied on it exclusively and ended up with a wine that's, uh, that's uh, more of a dessert wine. And it's got an AVB of about 20%. Now I can fix that. <laughs> that's not a problem. I can reduce that and also reduce the amount of sugar by simply watering it down a little bit, which is what I intend to do because 20%, yeah, I can handle 20%, but sometimes you don't want a wine that tastes just like alcohol. You want a wine that's going to taste like wine. Uh, da, 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 what is this? Uh, I don't want to butcher your name, Kazumo. Uh, I've been taking inspiration from these videos to export an alcohol making process to my college for big money. Huh, okay. Got to remember, these things take about a year, <laughs> okay? You can drink them in about three or four weeks if what you really want is what they refer to as jailhouse wine. I mean, if you just want, if you just want something that's going to give you a kick, <laughs> you can drink this anytime you really want to once fermentation, initial fermentation has been completed. But uh, if you want wine that's going to taste like wine, mm, excuse me, you've got to wait for it. Uh, let's see. No, no, that doesn't sound bad. <laughs> All right. Uh, one from D, uh, DLC Shark. I think uh, they refer to blending of fruits. Cause, okay, that was. I hope you got. I don't know if you guys can see each other's comments. Uh, it would be great if you could. But uh, let's see. I'm going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of yeast. Now, for those of you who think that, well, you need to bloom it or you need to, you know, saturate it first and to get the process started. No, you really don't. Uh, because I've got such a narrow opening, I'm just going to give it a little swirl. But for most of the wines that I've made, that has basically been it. Uh, let's see. On the subject of yeast, um, as much as I can... All of the wine projects that I've done have been as natural as possible. I mean, I started out, yeah, I started out using uh, Camden tablets for, for, for sterilization. I started, in fact, I still do. We use a peptic enzyme when I'm using fresh fruits to help break down the, the, the pulp and to, to extract more of the juice. I mean, this is a natural enzyme, so I don't mind doing that. But again, I pretty much have gotten away from... <laughs> I pretty much have gotten away from using Camden tablets. Uh, mostly because I go under the premise that a lot of you guys aren't going to have a lot of this stuff here. Okay. You're not going to have, if you're lucky, you might have wine yeast, but sometimes all you've got is your Fleissmann's yeast. And, uh, this particular Fleissmann's yeast, uh, this rapid rise or your pizza yeast, those are not going to work. You need the, 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 the original, the original Fleissmann's yeast in the, in, in the red packet. Uh, that will work, and I think I did that. Yeah, I did do that in my uh, my second, my second, well, actually my first wine making video. Was it my first? Yeah, it was. Where I used uh, regular bread yeast. Oh, a lot of comments. Uh, Mr. Reister, uh, the wine most likely won't get to 20%. That one did. <laughs> it stopped fermenting, fermenting at 20%. Uh, the yeast will most likely be killed off by the alcohol. Depends on the yeast. This stuff it usually goes up to about 18%. The uh, Premier Blanc, uh, how that managed to get up to 20%, well, the amount of sugar, it had a field day, so it was pretty happy. Uh, Cusmano, uh, oh, it's going to age for a while and be the premier source for homemade hooch for, for the mid-Missouri area. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> uh the Zoom works, Ohio. Okay. The Zoom works. The stream has started a few minutes ago. Uh, DCL Clark, uh, I racked my first batch of wine yesterday. Blueberries from the backyard. Good for you. Blueberry, blueberries is actually a pretty popular uh, fruit wine. Uh, uh, if you kind of like during my research and doing which wine to do next, blueberries came up near the top of the list. So uh, it's got a nice color. Uh, from what little bit I've tasted, which has not been much, 
Yeah, I think that's going to be a pretty nice batch. Again, the hard part is you've got to wait for it to age. Uh, of all of the batches of wine that I made, including the ones that I bottled, whenever I've done a tasting, uh, I mean they taste. I mean they taste like wine, but they have a they have a harsh or a slightly harsh taste to them. I mean, other than that, I think that's what the aging pretty much uh, pretty much eliminates is that harshness. Uh, and as long as you can get to that stage where okay. I want to let it wait for a while so that when I pour a glass, I don't have this thick layer of, 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 of lease, your, your dead yeast, sitting in the bottom of the glass. That was my first, first, first awareness that you need to let wine age. And then now it's a question of, okay, if I let it age several months, I can at least get it to clear. After that, I can at least get it to start tasting better and better and better. So everything that I've made so far is, is, is just being aged at this point. Uh, a few comments. Uh, let's see. Uh, you know, Clark, my sister said it tasted like communion wine. Okay. Uh, and some works. My first attempt at making wine is just a few months ago. I used cranberry juice from the store and tried three different types of yeast, wine yeast, bread yeast, and wild yeast. Uh, the pomegranate wine that I made, I just actually bottled that day before yesterday. That's still some pretty, I mean, it's got a that cranberry flavor really comes through. This is not one that's going to mellow out per se. It's it's going to taste like 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 pomegranate juice rather. Uh, racking is a lot more messy than it should be. Kimono, I agree with you. I agree with you completely. Case in point, this one, this is the mango wine. I don't know how if you guys can see it or not. It's got a layer of yeast that's about the, the width of my finger. Uh, this was last racked on the on the fifth of this month. And quite honestly, it's about time for me to rack it again. And that's kind of a tedious process because you've got to clear, you've got to clean out another carboy, you've got to, you know, sterilize it and all of that. You then got to rack it from one to the other without without drawing your lease. And a racking cane definitely helps out with that. And you know, it's it, it's not it's, it's it's a hassle. It's a fun hassle, but it's a hassle. What's really a hassle is actually the bottling aspect of it because you've got to fill each and every one of those individual little bottles and it can get a little bit messy. But before you bottle it, you've got to aerate your wine and that could be a bit of a chore. So, you know, I mean, there are some, there's some work aspects to the hobby, but once it's in the bottle and you've got a label on it and everything is looking good, then once it's come of age, it'll be well worth the effort. Uh, let's see. Da -da -da -da. Uh, Nizam works. Haven't tried them yet, though. Uh, Ron, Ron Green. Tomorrow I will be racking my blueberry wine, seven gallons. I'm going to stop here because everything that I've made has been one gallon batches, which is a godsend because I have to make these things almost every week. I don't have a place to store five to seven gallon batches of wine. It would be great once you've once you've got your recipe down pat and you know what the wine is going to taste like. And you're ready to start making five and seven gallon batches based on the recipe that you know that works, then great. I can't do it because I live in an apartment. I've got no place to put this stuff. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like that. Um, let's see. I'm putting my first batch of, of banana in the cardboard tomorrow. Speaking of which, this was my first ever batch of, of banana wine. Put this down here. Banana wine has some interesting properties to it. One, it clears very quickly. Two, it uh, it goes to dry very quickly. So uh, really, really, this thing is, for all intents and purposes, has stopped fermenting. Uh, I'm gonna let this sit in the bottle for another month just to let any 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 small amount of lease uh, go ahead and set, uh, settle out. But basically, yeah, this might be a, a fairly tasty wine. It might be an interesting experience making banana wine for the first time. But hey, I'm doing it so. Year from now, I'm good to go. Uh, da, 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 blueberry wine in the kitchen, bad idea. In a white kitchen, bad idea. <laughs> uh, whoa, uh, dear Clark, uh, the mango is neon in the video. Okay. <laughs> uh, don't know what to say about that. Uh, let's see, seven gallons, I'm jealous. I am too, in a, in a sense. Uh, Dio Clark, I started banana and apple last night. 
good for you. Uh, let's see, we've got our we've got our our yeast in here, and it's now time to find out just how just how potent this has the potential of being. So let's go ahead and take a gravity reading. I love my turkey baster for this. Anybody's wondering why there's a little bit of tape wrapped around the top of my flask here. It's really very simple. I broke it, <laughs> okay? And my replacement hasn't come back yet, so I'm trying to make do. All right, this is riding pretty high, and I've got a good reason to put on my reading specs. So hold on. All right, I've got a gravity reading of, da, 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 where is it? There it is. Looks like 1.074. I think I can bring it up just a little bit. Oh, for, the, for those of you who don't quite know, that means that it's going to have an alcohol potential of about, potentially of about 10%. Now, I like my wine just a little bit stronger than that. So I'm going to go ahead and, can I do this? Good. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more sugar. Uh, da, 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 da. Plan B. No, yeah, plan B, which I just happen to have handy. All right, that's about half a half a cup. See, there's a reason why you see me doing a lot of this in the kitchen because I got tired of, got tired of this spilling all over the place. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and incorporate some of that. Some of you may have also noticed in some of my videos that I don't really spend a lot of time showing this part of the process anymore because it is a little time. Ah, see, that's why you always should do this with the hydrometer already in there. There we go. Let's try that again. All right, that's coming in at 1.082 which should give me an alcohol of about 10 and a half percent. It's a bit on the weak side for my taste, but hey, you know what? That's good enough. And let's get that back in there to about yay high. Let's get a cap on that. Nope, let's not get a cap on that. Let's get that in there. All right, comments. Uh, good idea. Video back sweetening. Actually, back sweetening would be a good idea for video because you're going to end up doing it quite a bit because a lot of these wines will go to very dry, as in no sugar whatsoever. Uh, does the type of sugar has to as an effect on AVB? Don't know. Uh, I mean, if I if I used honey and made a mead out of it, that shouldn't really matter. I, it's it's really just the amount of sweetness uh, that the hydrometer is detecting, I believe. So I don't know. Uh, Nizam works. No, no. Uh, Nizam works. Oh yeah, I love to learn more about back sweetening. Okay, okay. <laughs> that sounds like uh, I was planning on taking a little break uh, after my next project was completed, but we'll see. 
Uh, have you tried distilling? Well, first of all, here in the United States, Cosmono, it's it's illegal. I mean, it's just plain illegal, so it's not really possible. I mean, you really can't distill wine. You can do you can go through the process of freeze distillation, but you really run into the problem that uh, uh, it develops a lot of methanol. That, quite honestly, even even if, you, if there's a reason why it's illegal, it can cause blindness. So uh, I would suggest uh, don't do it. Would be my advice on that. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. Uh, let's see. Zam uh, works. I tried making apple jack for the first time last month, so I know what you've been doing. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's very nice. Well, I mean, uh, DCL Clark, uh, you want to? Do you want out more sugar in there? Do you want? I don't know. I mean, I've used two and a half cups. I mean, if I wanted it stronger, then yeah, I would add more sugar. I'm not quite sure what you're asking there. Oh, uh, want to put more? Want to put more? Do you want to put more sugar in there? No, I don't. Uh, I mean, I got half a cup left, but I, I really don't need to. Plus, what I spilled on the, on the, on the counter, <laughs> all of that stuff. Uh, no, I think I think that's more than enough for 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 this wine. Uh, uh, I'm going more for for flavor than for effect on this one. I apply besides, I've got I think seven or eight that are pretty potent enough where I think enough alcohol. <laughs> there's just enough alcohol in it for me. Um, as that works, to be honest, uh, what I did with the apple jack was uh, soak raisins and walnuts in and make a bread raisin bread with it. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, I'm not that much of a hard alcohol drinker. Of course not. That's why you're drinking wine. <laughs> but that's not to say you can't have strong wine. Uh, wine and beers are my thing. Um, well, I don't know. I'm pretty, I'm pretty diverse. Uh, the reason why you're seeing me making a lot of wine on this channel is pretty much due to the fact that these are relatively cheap. Uh, yeah, these are relatively cheap, more or less. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. What am I missing? Okay, because that's done. That's done. I need to put water in my uh, my airlock. Uh, but since fermentation really isn't going to start happening until sometime early tomorrow, I'm not too concerned about it. After the video, I'll go ahead and. And put uh, put water into the into the levels. It's uh, it's a necessity uh, for those who might not be aware. Uh, basically, uh, it does stop uh, uh, bad things from getting into the wine. Uh, I have had on on I think three of my jugs where I've I've come in and I've looked at the airlock just to see you know how bu how fast it's bubbling, and I've noticed that they're like little little fruit flies that have managed to work their way down to this part and uh, got stopped so they don't end up going into the wine possibly helping it uh, uh, turning it into vinegar so again uh, I've, I've done videos where I've shown where you can just simply use not using an airlock but just simply putting the cap on just tight enough where uh, the CO2 can escape uh, bugs can't get in but uh, really to be on the safe side going with an airlock is the way to go these things are cheap they're dirt cheap yeah, they're dirt cheap. Uh, oh, speaking of which, I don't have it. Yeah, I don't have it here. Uh, but most of my most of my jugs, I think I've got ten of these and just one of these. This is a one gallon jug. This is a four liter jug. I like the four liters because by the time you've racked out everything above your lease. You pretty much have the amount of, of wine left over to fill a one gallon jug. Uh, one gallon or four liters, you're going to get five bottles of wine out of that. Uh, that's that's unless you've done something wrong, you're going to get five bottles of wine out of that. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, what has been your favorite homemade wine so far? Uh, it's been apple. Yes. Uh, Apple is, is easy to make. It, it matures really quickly. Uh, uh, it's just it's just simple. I mean, the process you see me go through here, 
uh, simply substituting a, a lemon for the tea. Uh, it's pretty much been all, all, all it's been necessary for me to do. I always have at least one batch of apple uh, uh, in the works uh, and maybe a few that are still still bottled. But yeah, apple is my favorite. Uh, but then again, I really haven't tasted everything else that I've made so far. So the apple is my current favorite. I put it to you that way. The lemon wine was OK. But again, I drank that uh, at an early stage and it still had a slight amount of harshness to it. But it was not too bad. Uh, da, 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 da. That being said, design works. Uh, is it better to drink the stuff young as a table wine? Nope. Uh, since... Since it's not the best juice in the world, it doesn't matter if it's the best juice in the world. I mean, uh, whether it's uh, Walmart specials or whatever, I mean, it's, it's all going to come down to the same in, in the end. Uh, I, I tend to do a lot of fresh fruit wines because it's it's an interesting way of making wine. But again, it's a lot more effort to do fresh fruit than it is to crack open a bottle and make wine that way. Um, is it... I get that it's illegal to distill, but if someone wants to do it privately, I still say no, because you can still go blind, and that's no joke. Um, slowly bringing it from holding it to turn. Well, don't know. I can't really tell you because I'm not really into uh, uh, distillation. Uh, I suggest uh, uh, another source might be available. I mean, I just don't know. Uh, let's see. Innovative music. Uh, typically, how long does it take for wines to ferment in a one-gallon jug? Same as a, a seven-gallon container. It, it doesn't matter. It takes the same time to do a one-gallon as it does to do a, a five- or seven-gallon batch. Nothing changes. Because uh, I'm all off topic, but uh, I thought I'd mention it. Yeah, well, you know, it's okay. I, mean, I didn't really expect to have anybody show up on my first session here, so I'm glad, I'm glad, to, I'm glad to talk to anybody. <laughs> Uh, design works. I really want to try your Granny Smith recipe. Uh, again, the only changes that I, I, this has come up, uh, I think twice so far. The only recommendation that I would make in terms of changing the recipe would be that instead of pouring the boiling water over the apples, uh, I would probably put the apples in boiling water and let them boil for about five or 10 minutes to help soften the apples up. I mean, it still comes out with a pretty good flavor uh, either way, whether you boil it or not, but probably just to soften the apples up. I thought that uh, the primary fermentation would help break up the apple uh, pulp more. <laughs> that was that was the hope. <laughs> but that didn't quite happen the way I thought it was. Uh, so I had to put a little bit of pressure to squeeze out a little extra juice when I when I racked it from primary and secondary. Um, Dio Clark, uh, you've done we, you've done your wines with only one fruit at a time. Any plant? Yep. Uh, the reason why I ended up doing this one was because the mixed berry uh, fruit that I wanted to use, the frozen version, uh, wasn't in stock. So I had to scramble around and, uh, and came up with a grapefruit uh, idea. Uh, yeah, yeah, I came up with a grapefruit idea because the other one wasn't in stock. Uh, I might try and squeeze that one in before I take a break. But uh, the one that I'm also doing at the, at the present time, which I haven't done the video on because I'm still I'm trying to do a more of a start to finish uh, effort. Uh, has been uh, the um, uh, rice wine that's currently in process. Uh, it's a, it's a few weeks along. It's it's it, the process for doing that is is, is is somewhat different than doing one of these. Uh, it's it's kind of an interesting experiment. Uh, but we'll see how that one how that one turns out. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, how, uh, how much does brown sugar change the flavor of the finished wine over that of white sugar? Can't tell you, don't know. The banana wine was the first time that I've used uh, brown sugar. Uh, well, it was actually a mixture, a, a half and half of brown sugar and white sugar because I wasn't quite sure of, of what the brown sugar was going to do besides banana wine. Not exactly, uh, you know, something that's familiar <laughs> to, to a lot of people that I know, but uh, it seemed very, very popular online. So, uh, I'll let you know um, when this one's ready to go. Um, that's it. Thank you. Welcome. Saki time. It's not Saki. Uh, I, f I think, uh, I'm trying to remember the, how it's pronounced, but there's a, 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 a bacterial culture. I think it's a Koji uh, that's used uh, with uh, the process for making rice wine, which actually turns it into Saki. 
Uh, this rice wine is just using uh, 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 sushi rice and uh, and the uh, wine yeast balls. So that's it's basically just plain rice wine, and that's all that is. Um, did a little research and found that out. Um, let's see. Uh, I gather sake is more complicated process. It's not really hard because a lot of it is just waiting around for it, just like uh, just like waiting around for wine. Except that uh, everything right now is in, is in a large pot, and the uh, the uh, yeast is converting the uh, rice starch into sh into sugars and then converting that into alcohol. And uh, the liquid that's down at the bottom of the pot uh, is is what is actually the rice wine. Technically, it's drinkable now. But uh, I still need to uh, squeeze the rice out to get every every drop of the uh, rice wine out. Then I need to uh, uh, pasteurize it a bit. Not necessary, but I'm just going to store it for a while. And then uh, even though you don't have to, I'm going to try and let some of the um, uh, uh, sediment settle out uh, to try and clear it up just a, a little bit more. But again, I'm not at that point yet. Uh, I'm like three weeks into the process, uh, another week before I can uh, uh, start straining the rice. Uh, but you'll see the videos. I, I don't want to do a two-parter. I'm just trying to do it all at once. And then again, I'll take a break after that. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, banana, banana wines and liqueurs are common in Uganda. Take your word for it. Uh, there was a Chinese rice wine recipe I, I saw that sounds like what you're trying to do. Um, I know there's some regional variations of, of the same thing. Uh, but yeah, you're probably right. Uh, the sake episode would be cool. Would be cool though. Actually, it would be <laughs> kind of. Uh, I must say that the banana wine smells fantastic when I stir in the prime. When I stir it in the primary fermenter, yeah, I mean it doesn't smell bad at all. Um, it doesn't smell bad at all. It, 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 the, the initial process it looks kind of gross, <laughs> not as gross as the rice wine does, but uh, yeah, it. it I'm surprised again with how quickly it cleared, how quickly it went there, it went dry. Uh, gravity reading of 0 0.998. Uh, so yeah, fermentation has stopped. Uh, I'm quite pleased with it. Uh, how long are you going to leave the grapefruit juice in there before racking it? Um, depends on how much uh, sediment comes uh, starts showing up at the bottom. Usually after about a month. Uh, I'll do a, a racking, and then every four to six weeks, depending on how much uh, uh, how much uh, sediment falls out in, until the wine is clear. I don't want to sit, let it sit on the lease for for more than a month because they say it can develop all flavors. But uh, I mean, hey, I'm retired. I need something to do, and that's you know something to do. So <laughs> that's how that works. Um, not quite sure why your printer is not working. Uh, John developer, are you going to start making tasting videos? Well, yes, if these things didn't take forever to make, uh, I would. I mean, I can do some early, early versions of tasting, uh, making it quite clear that, yeah, there's going to be a certain level of harshness. Um, uh, but yeah, I can do some early tastings. Besides, tastings are, are, are another way of having just another video. You can start running out of fruit <laughs> to make when you're making these videos. So, yeah, that's just another way of doing it. Uh, thank you for your amazing videos. <laughs> I mean, they're okay. I mean, from what from what they say, uh, uh, doing a YouTube channel, they say that basically your first hundred videos or so kind of kind of are not very good. Uh, my first couple of videos compared to these uh, my latter videos they're not as good I mean I'm okay you know. but they're not uh, it, it takes time uh, to, to develop a, a, a presence in front of talking to your cell phone when there's nobody else around okay you just have to have to go with the flow uh, uh, what I have now I've got uh, I've got two box lights uh, my cell phone on a tripod and my laptop, which I really don't use when I'm when I'm uh, doing these videos, but for the streaming, that's all I've got going for me, and uh, that's all I really need. Now, when I get 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, and I can start monetizing my channel, well, you know, then I can start getting more stuff. But uh, as it stands right now, uh, all you need to do a channel is your cell phone, 
and, and the willingness to, to just start doing it. That's all there is to it. Just start doing it. Uh, then, uh, indeed, thank you very much for the whole series of videos. Uh, duh. There is something appealing about a gallon jug of wine sitting around. <laughs> I have finally, after many, many months, now that I've moved the jugs out of my bedroom and into a closet where I don't look at them anymore. I might look at them once a week, you know, just to check, check just to check the status. But uh, I finally gotten out of the habit of, of, of just constant fascination with the winemaking process. Now I just have to get over that waiting one year before your wine is ready process. <laughs> uh, but beyond that, yeah. Uh, uh, so since it's not fruit, you don't have to do the five to ten. Well, you do. I mean, fermentation really doesn't change whether it's made from juice or if it's made for, uh, for fresh fruit. The only thing that I don't have to do uh, using, again, bottled juice is that I don't have to go the sterilization process which basically involves me pouring or boiling water over the fruit, uh, which in and of itself is not that hard. I mean, if I really wanted to, to be quick and dirty about it, I could use the Camden tablets. 12 hours later, I'm good to go. Uh, but again, I'm trying to get away from that because I know that a lot of people probably won't have Camden tablets. And besides, uh, boiling water is more natural. The only hard part about the boiling water scenes that you see me doing is that I got a small kitchen and trying to get a tripod and lights in there and trying to hunch over over the stove. And basically what you're doing is that you're behind the tripod and you have to reach around it. <laughs> OK, to try to try and stir stuff up or, or pick stuff up. It's not that easy. OK, sometimes you might sit, hear me grunt a little bit uh, uh, in the background. Well, it's because, you know, it's not easy to, 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 to manipulate yourself around that tripod to get something done. Uh, that's why I like doing the bottle juices, because I don't have to do that. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, they've been exactly the sort of thing I wanted to learn from. OK, Zom works again. Uh, I still sit and watch the yeast bubbling away. It's fascinating. I, I grant you that. Uh, I have wild yeast culture. Now, those are kind of hard to do. Uh, while these culture, I keep on my desk and shine a light on it a few times a day to watch the bubbles. It's fascinating. Uh, I did the wild yeast thing when I when I did my uh, 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 ginger beer uh, recipe. I use yeast now, uh, store-bought yeast now because it's just quicker. But uh, yeah, I mean, I could say I've done it. It just takes a little while. Uh, music, message attached. All right, uh, because my cell phone is used for this, I can't look at it now. Um, John Developer, someone buy this man a hot plate for the table. <laughs> um, I always hear the grandfather clock in the background, and I don't mean that as a complaint. Well, I kind of figured that might be an issue. Uh, uh, I didn't realize this was going to be a longer video than it is. I like my clock, by the way. You know, I paid a lot of money for it, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I was going to, I mean, it does have a volume control. It's a Seiko, but it does have a volume control. I could have turned it down and probably for subsequent videos, I probably will. But for this video, I'm keeping it on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yep. Easy to make bread from it too. Gingerbread. Yeah. Ginger, yeah. Duh. Gingerbread. Got it. Uh, trying to think of what else to do because this is done. This, this part of the process is done. Well, since the wine is done, I can answer a few more questions uh, before we uh, go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, what is this? Uh, innovative music. Um, it might be good for wine if you want it out of eight percent eight percent eight percent you you can hardly really call that wine because there's not enough alcohol to to, to help stabilize the wine uh, uh, you, you, you need at least ten percent uh, of wine uh, ten percent ABV uh, to at least make it uh, more or less shelf stable as it were uh, uh, do you find the fermenting process a bit annoying in the middle of the night is airlock keep burping actually no uh, that's not why I moved mine into the into the closet. It just basically just 
it was a it was a better environment. Uh, this is this is North Carolina. It's hot. Okay. Uh, uh, keeping it in, in the closet where I've got it, it's more of a, a, a temperature controlled environment. It's cooler. Um, uh, I think when I first, when I, my very first few wines, uh, definitely when the uh, when fermentation, initial fermentation was going on, uh, definitely there was a, a, you knew you were working, in, you, you knew you were making wine, okay? The, the, there was a definite odor uh, about the winemaking process. Uh, when I made the strawberry wine, that was really kind of potent. Well, that was really kind of potent until I started making this rice wine. Okay, so no, as, as long as they're, they're, they're fermenting way and secondary fermentation in, in, the, in the closet, I, I don't notice it at all. Um, at all. Uh, da, 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 da. You've always used that yellow pack of yeast. That, I used this because when I first got my first pack of wine yeast, it was an 11 pack package of this. All right. Uh, I, I have since gotten a, a, an assortment pack. It's a five pack. Yeah, five pack assortment pack of different uh, uh, Red Star yeast for, di for, for different types of wine. Uh, but this is all I had. So you'll hear me saying in some of my videos, uh, use what you got. Well, this is all I've got. Uh, now that I know how this works, if I'm looking for a high alcoholic content, this is the one to go with. If I want something that's going to help develop the, uh, the the more fruity esters and all of that sort of thing, yeah, I'll, I'll use something different, which is what I think I used when I used my last batch of wine, which was, um, um, God, what was the last batch of wine? I don't want to have to get up and go, go to the closet and see what's in there. Uh, oh, the raspberry wine. Duh. Uh, that one I used, uh, I used a different Red Star brand. Uh, uh, specifically for that particular wine. Uh, da, 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 you've already, da, it's okay. I've got the red, green, and blue. <laughs> uh, let's see. I've always used the, the blue ones because go hard or go home. That stuff just works. Yeah, same thing for this. This stuff just works. I've not had a stuck fermentation using this kind of wine. Uh, uh, I can simply do without using a yeast nutrient when I'm using this, uh, unless the recipe calls for it. Oh, by the way, I'm in the uh, camp that firmly believes that wine is a yeast nutrient. I think what I'd like to do is a video where I'm using, I'll go out and buy some yeast nutrient and then uh, uh, make, uh, uh, do a batch with raisins and then, and then do a, a control with this, neither one, uh, just to see what the yeast nutrient will, will do for me. I'm still giving that idea some, 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 some thought. It might take a while to get it going, but yeah, it's back there. Uh, da, 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 da. I get 10 packs of the blue, double ordered by mistake. Hey, wine yeast is wine yeast. Uh, thanks for making the videos. I've been enjoying them a lot. Well, you're welcome. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Everything's fine. Let's see. Okay. Oh, uh, I asked at the beginning of this uh, of this video stream how everything looked on your end. If uh, somebody can give me just a quick uh, uh, thumbs up or something saying that the video is okay enough or if there's just a bit of an issue, just too much of an issue, uh, let me know that now because I really can't see it. All I've got is a, a 15 second delay on my end so I can't can't really tell anything what's going on. Uh, let's see. Uh, how long does it uh, take for fruit wine need to mellow before it tastes like store-bought wine? Hmm. We're talking at least a year, buddy. At least a year. Uh, some, some some people will say a year to 18 months. Uh, I'd say a year before it's actually really ready. Uh, and again, store-bought wine, we're not, we're not really talking like top shelf wine, <laughs> okay? It's kind of like more the middle section or the middle shelves of wine, uh, of wines that we're using. These particular bottles that we see here, these are recycled. Uh, Gala Rossi wine bottles that you find at the bottom shelf of, uh, of Walmart. Uh, I get them because they're cheap. Uh, the wine itself, if you, you know, kind of force yourself to call it that, uh, I mean, the bottles are cheaper there getting it that way than getting them off Amazon. I'll put it to you that way. Plus, what you get off Amazon are the one gallon bottles. And again, I like the four liter bottles because of, because of the size. The video looks good. Thank you very much. That means that after a day of messing with the stupid software, it's now working. 
Um, it's better at the begin. It was better at the beginning, but still a little choppy. Dang. Hmm. All right. As long as it's not MD 2020. MD 2020 is a fortified wine. I didn't find that out until somebody asked me a question about about that uh, some time ago. I think it was No No asked me a question about that. And I did a little research and found out what it was. Uh, uh, growing up, while we were still in, I think it was high school. Uh, I'm kind of saying it was in high school, around that time in high school. Uh, those of us on the block, because back then, you know, everybody knew each other on the block and we all grew up together. Uh, we were we were t experimenting with uh, Strawberry Hill. Uh, never really tried MD 2020. We knew it was there. We knew it had a certain connotation associated with it, but basically, no, nope, never really tried it. Still haven't tried it. But now that I know it's a fortified wine, I really don't have a need for it. It does what it's designed to do. Okay, it, it's, it has an effect for those who are looking for an effect. Um, I imagine one advantage to one gallon batches is that you don't have to cork 30 bottles at a time. You're right. Uh, I finally got. Uh, 30 natural wine corks along with the little sleeves that go on top. I think it cost me about $15. Um, before then, I was using or, or reusing the uh, synthetic wine corks, uh, which you know, I mean still work. Uh, but again, those things can get those things can add up. Uh, so 30, 30. We're talking about six batches. One, two, three, plus three. Uh, if I want to bottle them that way, uh, I think what I'm going to probably end up doing is that instead of using all of the natural wine corks uh, for for every bottle, I'll probably uh, uh, since I still have to get still have to recycle uh, wine bottles that I get, uh, uh, I'll use those corks for the ones that I'm probably going to open up relatively quickly and probably will cork using natural corks at least two bottles uh, to be given as gifts or as uh, you know, more or less as gifts uh, when I'm trying to, you know, make an impression. Uh, da, 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 what are your thoughts on cold crashing? Uh, I do it from time to time. Uh, I'll, I'll put it in the refrigerator for a couple of days. Uh, in my case, I sometimes have to because I need to reuse these bottles as quickly as I can uh, to make the next batch of wine. Uh, so I'll do that for a few days before I, 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 uh, I bottle it. Uh, I mean, it's okay. It, 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 it works when you have to, but it's not cold crashing is not going to it's not going to clear. Cold crashing is not going to clear this up anytime soon. OK, you can use additives, uh, clarifying agents and all of that uh, if you want to. Uh, but the end of the day, it still comes down to the fact that you still have to wait <laughs> for the wine to age before you can drink it. Just because it's clear quicker and you can bottle it quicker doesn't mean that you can drink it quicker. Uh, that's my, my thoughts. Uh, okay, it's perfect. All right, uh, it's now 8:53. Uh, I'm going to cut this short probably in the next few minutes because I've done I've done what I set out to do was to make this. Uh, let me move this over. Uh, let's see. You want me to send you some yeast nutrient for your experiment? I have an extra pack. Well, thank you, DCL Clark, but no, because uh, again, uh, uh, the only project, well, I might try and squeeze in that mixed berry uh, uh, wine project, but my, my last project is going to be that wine project. I want to finish that up and then I'm going to take another break. Actually, it was after, I was supposed to have taken a break, uh, uh, I think three or four videos ago. I think I took like a week or two off. That's not a break, okay? <laughs> that's, that's not a break. It's summertime. Think of it as summer vacation. I need, I need to take some serious time off. Uh, again, not because I can't come up with something to make. It's just that, you know, uh, I just need a little time off. I'm tired. Uh, you're fantastic. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, it's easy to tell somebody else to do keep doing what they're doing, especially when that guy is trying to tell you he's tired, okay? <laughs> there are gray hairs up here for a reason, you know? <laughs> I gotta take a break. I want to. I want to just. I want to just sit on the sofa and just watch TV, play, play play with my tablet, you know, video games. I just want to chill for a while, okay, while I still can, because stepping out to the store these days can be something that might do you in a few days later. So while everybody is still healthy and safe, 
uh, uh, I'm going to try and do this in a, in a positive manner because you never can tell when that last trip to the grocery store was going to be the last trip to the grocery store. Uh, let's see. No, no, you must be making more videos. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't don't be working when you're not supposed to be working. Good advice. Uh, the sort of wine you make seems best around harvest time. Well, you're right about that. Uh, when you can get fruit in season, but you know if you got to make something every every other week or so, you really don't have that option. So my 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 order preference: fresh fruit, frozen fruit, something that comes out of a bottle. Haven't broken down to using a can yet, but uh, uh, yeah, use what you got, whether it's in season or not. Uh, let's see. Take all the breaks you need. I don't imagine any of us will fault you for it. I mean, thanks. All right. Da, da, da. All right, folks. I think I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, I'm glad that for well, wait, 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 you definitely deserve a break. If you want one, I am looking forward to next year when you have tons of wine to do. <laughs> Uh, funny thing is, I don't really drink as much wine as I used to. Now I've got all this wine accumulating. <laughs> bottles and bottles of stuff already that have, that, that have, that, that will have to be dealt with one way or another. Uh, uh, I'll have to figure something out. Uh, frozen berries, I think, would be cheaper than fresh. Actually, they are. Uh, frozen berries are, well, actually, frozen fruit in general tend to be a little bit cheaper than fresh. Uh, Plus, uh, certain, certain fresh foods you have to use like real quick. So frozen berries, just throw them in the freezer when you're ready to do a video. Boom, there they are, ready to go when you're ready. Uh, let's see. You're welcome. Uh, Nezim works. Nezim, Nez, N E Z O M. Nezim works. Or is that an I? There's an I in there. Nezumi works. I'll get it eventually. All right, folks. <laughs> You're right about that 200 gallon limit. Uh, I don't know. Well, I'm sure there are people out there that are making 200 gallons at, at a time. I've seen uh, uh, some sites that I've visited where, uh, even on Facebook, where people have shown their wine racks where they've got hundreds of bottles of wine that have been bottled up, ready to go. It's kind of like, what are you going to do with all that wine? I mean, it's fine if you can make it and then not have to worry about making it for a year or so, but uh, I don't know. It's just like it's like more wine than I've ever had in, 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 at, at one time with, with more coming. So we'll see. Okay, folks, it is time for me to uh, press the end stream button. I do appreciate everybody who showed up and um, had a look-see, my first video. Uh, I'll probably do more of these uh, over time. Uh, but again, hey, thank you very much for showing up.